Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we have part two of our couture pencil skirt sew along. I am using New Look Pattern 6217. I'm using the pencil skirt from that pattern. Um, and today we are going to get our um, main pieces actually cut out. So we're actually going to be putting our organza that we have all marked and ready to go onto our skirt or to the skirt fabric. And then we'll be hand basting our underlining to the skirts and getting that all cut out and then also getting our lining all cut out. Um, and then we're going to be sewing the skirt together, uh, do all the machines, stick the zipper in, that kind of thing. Um, and then the plan is for next week we will do all the finishing up because there's, you know, we'll be putting in the Petersham facing into the waistband next week and doing all the hand sewing that finishes off the lining to the inside of the skirt. So, um, yes, this ended up being a three week sew along instead of just a two week, but um, I don't like the videos to get too terribly long. I think that that gets to be a lot and a little overwhelming for people, so... That's what I decided to do. So by the end of the day, you will have um, a skirt sewn and a lining sewn, and they will be attached together roughly um, at the top, but then um, that will be it for today, and then next week we will do all the finishing touches. All right, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, as always, if you have any questions, leave them down below, and I'll see you guys next week for the final of our Sew Along Sunday for the pencil skirt. <laughs> okay, see you then, bye. All right, so I have my organza pinned to my brocade, and um, you'll notice that there's overlap here, and you may be thinking, oh my gosh. Um, I actually, I, I just left, there's, a, I mean, there's like five inches away from the stitching line here that I don't need. Um, so I have pushed this part out. I still am leaving myself about a one inch seam allowance on this piece. Um, and the evil eye among you will notice that I'm having to cut this out on the cross grain because I, my fabric was not wide enough, um, just barely. <laughs> but I wanna keep nice one inch seam allowances or at least around an inch seam allowance because this stuff frays like crazy. Um, so I do wanna keep uh, bigger seam allowances. So I don't have any seam allowances marked and that's okay, they don't have to be precise. I just wanna leave nice big ones. So now I have um, threaded a nice long needle, you guys probably can't see that, a nice long needle, it's probably too far away, but a long thin needle with some silk thread. Now this um, is just vintage silk thread and actually it's pretty brittle, so it's probably pretty old. Um, I actually pulled it out of Joyce's stash. Um, also, a tip on silk thread. You should never sew anything with silk thread. They used to. And silk thread is just way too tough on garments and even silk garments, it will shred a garment from wear. So because the thread is so strong, it will just completely serrate uh, the seam line over time. So um, you shouldn't sew with uh, silk thread. And <laughs> also learn this from Joyce, if you are um, basting, you don't wanna ever baste with like red silk thread on a pale pink silk because it could transfer dye. So there you go, there's your two lessons for the day. Um, I'm using red thread just so I can see it on this kind of black back of this fabric. But all you're gonna do is you're literally just going to trace all the lines that you made with your wax paper with your needle and thread. I don't tie a knot in my basting thread. Um, it just makes it easier to pull out later. You can even do really long pieces because it's fine. You could do a back stitch, I may do a back stitch. But we're basically just doing a really long running stitch. Again, you can use regular thread for this. But we're just gonna take, and I'm, I mean literally, I'm taking like, I don't know, five eighths of an inch bites, which is why you want a long needle, because you can take a couple of bites before you have to pull it through. So we're just gonna sew along all of our seam lines, or based, I guess, including your darts, you're gonna mark, you're gonna sew your two piece, your two layers together um, through the darts. And it'll make your life so much easier. And I'm also going to baste down the center line that I created, um, which was the fold line from the pattern pieces, um, just because that's just gonna help keep things together until I can get everything sewn together. So this is what I'm doing. I am just going around the entire perimeter of the skirt. I'm not gonna worry about marking, um, I mean, you could, I guess, if you, had a pattern piece where you needed to be able to see a certain notch on the right hand side, you can definitely mark, you know, little X's and stuff with your basting thread. I'm not going to. I'm really just basting in order to um, put these pieces together, uh, the underlining with the fashion fabric. 
So yeah, so you're just gonna go along. It's a good time to put on some music, put on a podcast, and just um, do some basting. The other thing about if you can find vintage silk thread, again, it's really hard to find because no one sews with it because it's so hard on garments, um, is that it slides through the silk organza like butter. And you don't get the uh, knots that you can sometimes get with polyester thread, which I'm sure has something to do with the way it's the it's been twisted. The thread has been twisted. But we're just marking our sewing lines. All right, so I've got this all hand basted with my silk thread to um, my brocade. Now, um, I haven't done the back yet, but you also need to uh, make sure you do your um, darts when you do that. Um, also, on the bottom, I have basted my hem allowance. So this is where the dress will fold or the skirt will fold up. I have not basted because I did trace the cut line, um, the bottom of the pattern. However, I did go ahead and baste on the side seams down to the cut line because that um, will get sewn with the machine. Um, you know, obviously you'll be cutting this part off. Um, you'll leave a seam allowance on the side. You'll cut at the line here. So now all you do is you want to give yourself around about an inch. So you're just going to cut. And it doesn't have to be precise because you're going to follow your stitching line, which is actually way more precise than following a raw edge anyway. So you're just going to cut roughly. Now at the bottom, I will just cut the line that I made. I'm really just kind of cutting off my salvage here that keeps rolling on me anyway. Again, I'm cutting this on the cross grain because my fabric was not wide enough. So the only actual line I cut on was the bottom of the skirt because that I did mark the cutting line there. So you can see this is wanting to roll up on me. All right, so there we go. That is my skirt front and it's just got rough seam allowances cut out about an inch which will be perfect and fine. I can throw away the rest of this organza or um, you can save the selvage, which I probably will do, that makes fantastic um, stay tape for any tailoring that you might do. So I will save, um, actually I may save all this. <laughs> Just set it over here in the scrap bin. Strips of organza always come in handy for different uh, couture or tailoring techniques. Okay, so I'm going to do the same treatment to the back, and then um, then we'll go ahead and cut out our lining just so that's done, um, and then I can move the camera into the sewing room because then we'll be doing mostly the machine and then just the finishing um, up by hand. So this is really, yeah, it's really not too bad. But yeah, this is nice and underlined, so I'm gonna off camera go ahead and do the back, and then I'll meet you back here for us to cut out the lining. All right. All right, so once you have your main body, your skirt, it is time to cut out your lining. And we're basically gonna do it the same way. I have white wax paper underneath. So it's white wax paper with the wax up. My fabric, which is right side up, so the wrong side is against the wax paper. And then my pattern piece on top. I'm using my tracing wheel and I am tracing the sewing lines. Um, so my actual stitching lines um, and leaving places between both um, pattern pieces, but I'm doing the same thing that I did with the organza. I'm marking the center and then I'm just flipping the pattern piece over so that I have things um, one piece without having to trace that paper, which you could trace both sides, obviously. So then you've got on the back side, I think you guys will be able to see this because the contrast is higher. Can you see that? <laughs> Maybe not. You've got your skirt pieces in the little dots. I may hold this up so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm afraid that I'm too far away. Uh, maybe not, because you're just going to see right through it. Can you see the lines? Oh, dang it. 
no I don't think it's gonna come across okay so <laughs> when you're done you will have both your front and your back um, lined up and again just like with your um, other main body of the skirt you can then go in and do a rough cut of seam allowances you don't quite need the one inch seam allowances on the lining I mean if you've got lining the phrase horribly you could um, and again I'm just gonna kind of split the difference right there the hip is where it got the tightest but yeah um, also want to note that my lining is the same length as my skirt right now we will trim that up at the end it will not remain that way but for now just cut along that bottom line just like you did for your other um, main body because again things can shift and then you get a lining that's just a little too short so I just like to get it sewn in and then we will true up the bottom of this lining and then when it gets sewn into the skirt by hand uh, the hem it will um, will have a little excess for the jump pleat so that you have room for the skirt to move uh, when you're sitting and moving and all that kind of thing. So yes, so once, and again I've marked my darts on the back here. This is a very rough cut. Cut it a little close here at the top, didn't I? Oopsie. I mean that should be fine, but you do want to watch that. So once your rough seam allowances have been cut, you are all done and we are ready to sew. Um, the stuff we're going to do next is all gonna be at the sewing machine and then next week, um, I think we're going to do, I'm going to do, I don't know, I know I'm going to do three weeks for this sew along. So next week we will do all the finishing, which will include all the little hand sewing bits that we'll still need to do to um, finish off the lining into the skirt. So there we have it, our front and back lining pieces in our silk, and again they're cut identical to the front um, of our main body. So now we are ready to go over to the sewing machine and um, sew our lining and our skirt together. All right, guys, Headless Whitney, <laughs> let's get this sewn up. All right, so for the end of this, we are going to sew up our lining and our skirt, and then we're just going to attach them at the waistband for today, and then next week we will go back and um, do all of the, most of the handwork. Um, I am going to give you some homework of handwork to do um, tonight, or this week. Sorry, not tonight. All right, so first things first. You are going to want to move this out of the way. <laughs> this is my back piece here, and I've got, um, can you guys see my, I'm gonna turn this off. I think that throws off the balance of my life. Ah, oh, there we go. Um, see if you guys can see my thread traced darts there. So that's my fabric backed with my uh, silk organza. So I'm just gonna fold these and I'm going to sew my darts. now. For couture sewing, you should always end your dart and then tie off your um, thread tails. <sighs> you guys know that I usually just backstitch my darts because I am lazy. So um, it's up to you. Technically the correct couture way is to, uh, really the correct way period, is to tie them off so you don't get the little dimple at the bottom. Um, this is pretty heavy fabric. I'm not real concerned about that. So I'm going to sew my darts on my back piece real quick now. I'm also going to use... Um, I'm going to use white thread. I don't know if that's going to help you see. Um, another thing, when I'm normally sewing, I don't use a lot of pins. However, because my raw edges don't match up, um, you've got to use pins. So I am just going to pin just a couple places on my dart here just to make sure nothing shifts. Actually, sewing a dart's not much different than the regular way I do it, but we'll just get in the habit of using more pins. All right, so I'm gonna sew both of my darts. All right, 
So I've got my dart sewn. I'm going to press these towards center back and then I'll be right back. I also want to note, okay, so I've got my darts. They are pressed towards center back. I also want to note that um, as we are going along sewing, you can take out the basting stitches. Just make sure if you have basting stitches, you know, if you were going in a continuous line, um, be sure to clip those so you don't actually pull, accidentally pull out basting stitches that you've not yet um, dealt with. So you could definitely go at this point, and I probably will, go ahead and pull out the basting stitches that are in your darts um, just to get that done so we don't forget about it later. And I'm going to make sure and clip my line here so that I don't accidentally pull out basting stitches that I don't want to pull out. Once we're finished with that, we're now going to sew the side seams of our skirt. This is actually a very easy sew, to be honest. Um, if you have front darts that you are wanting to sew, now is the time to do those. But now I am just going to match right sides together, my back and my front at my side seams. And um, you're going to want to make note of a few things. Okay, I'm putting my invisible zipper on the right-hand side, right-hand side when worn of my um, skirt. So that will be, this will be my left-hand side. This is the top of the skirt here. So this is my left-hand side um, because everything's backwards right now. And then my right-hand side's this way. So um, first things first, let's just sew all the way down on the left-hand side of the skirt because remember I'm putting my slit on the right and my zipper. So here's where you've really got to get creative with your pinning. Now, you can see my silk basting line just barely there. So I just am going to put pins in. <laughs> I'm going to put pins in and I'm going to match the very top corner. And then I'm just going to go down the whole skirt and I'm going to pin baste basically because again my seam allowances aren't going to match. So I'm just going down and I'm matching my sewing lines all the way down to the very hem of the skirt. So I'm going to do that real quick. So now that I've got that whole side of my, well, here, you can see the pin heads better. The whole side of the skirt pin basted, I'm now going to sew from the top to the bottom. So from the waistline down to the um, hem. And remember, when you get down to the um, hem, you're going to do that little jog because um, if you pegged your skirt at all, which is where it comes in tighter at your knee, um, your hem allowance will have to come. So if you pegged your skirt, your hem allowance has to come back out um, at an angle. So I'm going to do that real quick. Just following, not following my raw edges, I'm following my um, marked basted um, sewing lines. Also, if you wanted to, you could baste these layers together with your basting thread if that, you know, if you've got fabric that's super shifty or whatever, um, instead of pin, pin basting, you could easily do it with thread um, if you wanted. Once you've got that all sewn, you can kind of go back and make sure you follow it on the line on the back, and I did. Um, you can go ahead and pull these basting stitches out. In fact, if you have fabric that easily marks, a lot of times you do want to take your basting stitches out because they, that silk, number one, could bleed, um, the dye could, uh, but also um, any kind of basting stitch could leave an indent in the fabric depending on what kind of fabric you're leaving. I'm not super concerned about that with this brocade, but I am going to go take the... the um, basting stitches out. Remember cut because I don't want to accidentally pull out the basting stitches from the um, top of the skirt or the bottom of the skirt. I just want to remove the basting stitches at the side seam. 
So you're going to want to make sure and cut those lines. And also, a lot of times you can grab and pull, especially if you've got silk basting thread, because that pulls out pretty easily. Okay, once your basting stitches are out, you're gonna go and just press this seam open all the way down. So I'm gonna go do that real quick and I'll come right back. Okay, while this skirt is flat because you've just done the one um, side seam, correct couture methods would have you catch stitch your seam allowance to your underlining. I'm gonna show you what a catch stitch is because we are gonna catch stitch our hems um, and our vent um, or, a, or a slit, excuse me, um, before we put the lining in. I am not gonna mess around with catch stitching my seam allowances. Um, I think this is gonna lay flat just fine, but that is the correct couture way. And again, I'm gonna show you how to do catch stitching um, here in a little bit, but that is something if you really wanna go whole hog, you can um, stitch down your seam allowances either side. You would just catch stitch this seam allowance to this side and this seam allowance to this side. Um, yeah, and if you're interested in that, I will be showing you what that looks like here in a little bit. All right, for the other side of our skirt, it's going to basically be the same, except for this side, because this is where we're going to put our zipper in, and I'm actually going to use a different in invisible zipper method. I was watching um, a video, a Mimi G video, and she put in an invisible zipper a way that I had not seen before, and it was interesting, and I'm going to try it out. I've never done it this way, but I'm going to try it out because it looked interesting. So, um, and that's what these sew-alongs are all about. We're sewing together, right? All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the top of the skirt with a basting stitch on my machine. I'm gonna actually use my machine. So I will pin baste everything just like I did on the other side. But I'm gonna start with a basting stitch and I'm going to um, sew with a basting stitch from the top to the notch. The notch is the bottom of the zipper. And then I'm gonna back stitch. And then I'm gonna switch to a regular stitch length and so from that notch, and I'm, not, I'm gonna do this all without breaking my thread, um, stitch from that notch to the marking of where my slit is, and then I'll back stitch and go back to a basting stitch and stitch with a basting stitch from the slit down to the very bottom of the skirt. This is just gonna help us when we are pressing so that we can get a nice crisp, crisp press when we go to do our catch stitching, especially um, on the slit. And then also we're gonna have the top basted because that's the way um, Mimi G had done her zipper and I would wanna try it out. So I'm gonna switch my machine to a five um, uh, millimeter stitch. And then I am going to pin baste my skirt just like I did on the other side. So I'll do that real quick. All right, I am all, let me show you, all pin basted again, all the way down. So again, basting stitch from the top to the zipper notch, or the notch on the side, which is the end of the zipper, I'll back stitch, then a regular 2.5 until I get to the slit, back stitch, and then from the slit to the bottom, a basting stitch. So we're gonna do that really quick. Oops, we're not gonna do that. Okay, make sure you switch your machine back to your regular stitch length because there's nothing more annoying than starting to sew and being on a, a basting stitch length. All right, so again, I have sewn basting stitch from the top to the bottom of the zipper. 
from the zipper to the top of the, of the slit, I have done a regular stitch length and then baste it again from the slit to the bottom of the skirt. Now, we're really quickly gonna go and I'm gonna press all this open um, and then we're gonna insert our zipper. So here we go. Let me go press this open and then I'll, I think I'm gonna change the camera angle for you guys at that point. Okay, I'm really hopeful that you guys can see well. <laughs> All right, so again, this is a new to me technique from Mimi G of inserting a invisible zipper. So I am really excited to give it a go. All right, first things first. This is our invisible zipper. And um, if you're, you know, the anatomy of an invisible zipper, you, you know, aren't supposed to be able to see anything. This is the right side. And then on the back, you've got these, um, the teeth that are kind of rolled around on themselves. I like to go unzip. Now you can use, in fact, I almost always use a really long zipper and then I just cut it to size. Um, but I'm going to take my iron and I'm going to, you can take the teeth on the back side and roll them flat. I like to lightly take my iron and press those open. Um, it, trust me, they'll roll back. It'll be fine, but it does make getting in there and sewing it so much easier. So I'm going to show you, this was actually a Sandra Betsina trick, but when you um, close an invisible zipper, it just, you know, can you see, sorry, I don't want to play around with my angle too much. I finally got it the way I wanted it. So it just kind of like lies flat for the most part. Um, when I'm done, especially if you're, you know, the right side down, it just kind of lies flat. This is a vintage zipper. It's been in the package a while. That's why it's all weird. So it lies flat, but then when I've um, pressed it open, you're going to see that it's going to be like standing like a tent, um, and that's the way you want it. So I'm going to go press my zipper real quick, and then we're going to insert it. All right, so now it's all pressed, and you can see it kind of stands up on itself. Um, it's it kind of this now, um, which is what I want. So, um, and again, be careful. You don't want to melt your teeth. You can melt your teeth if you're not careful, but it does help just to run and just to kind of press the way that they, they wrap over themselves, press them flat. It just helps you get in there and get a really nice close, um, sew with that. All right. So, excuse the use of the word sew there. Um, let me find the right side of my skirt here. All right. And honestly, looking at this in retrospect, it may be easier if you are um, somewhat of a beginner, if you did the left side first and put the zipper in first and then sewed the right side, but oh well. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my zipper way above my um, um, skirt because again, we're gonna, we're gonna cut it down and then this keeps the pull out of the way. But with just a regular foot on my zipper. We're basically basting this in. So I'm going to line up in my seam line here. So I've got um, most of my skirt to the left of the machine. I'm just sewing on this um, right seam allowance, but I'm going to have this, make sure you've got it right, your zipper right side down on top of the seam allowance. I'm just going to match the um, center part of the zipper, kind of eyeball it. Um, the, you know, the seam of the zipper basically, to the crease of the skirt where I basted that seam. Just gonna eyeball it and I'm just gonna sew on the outside edge of the tape, basically basting it to the um, seam allowance. I'm not using a basting stitch, I'm using a regular stitch, but I'm just gonna kind of make sure that all lines up. I'm looking to see how far down I need to sew. Make sure you're not sewing any of the skirt under there. Make sure it's out of the way. All right, so as you can see, hopefully on that white thread, I've just sewed like really close to the edge of the tape. We're basically basting it in place. So now you don't have to worry about anything lining up because everything's basted in place. I'm going to start at the bottom and do the same thing on the other side and I shouldn't have to line everything up. Everything should lie flat. So I'm just going to, easier said than done, start about where I finished on the other side and I'm going to sew back up the other side. So now our invisible zipper is just basically basted in place.
So what we're gonna do next is I'm going to get my seam ripper and I'm gonna break open the basting stitches on that um, uh, seam line that we did earlier for the zipper. So I'm gonna do that really quick. So in essence, that step just basted the zipper in place and make sure that everything that your um, waist seam is all lined up and it just kind of makes sure everything stays in place. So now we're gonna go and actually sew the invisible zipper in properly. Okay, making sure we're down to where I wanted to stop, and we are. All right, so now, now we are going to, so I've got everything, you know, turned, so we basted it in. Now we're going to unzip it. And I'm gonna unzip it even if I can past, see if you can see this. All right, so I'm unzipping it, and as you can see, it's just basted in place right now. But I wanna unzip it even past where I've stopped this seam allowance. So you can kinda get up under there and tuck the, tuck the pole in to your seam. I think I sewed my tape down too far past the point that I wanted to. So do as I say, not as I do. I'm gonna unpick a little bit of this. Okay, there we go. All right. There we go. Okay. So now I can unzip the zipper um, to the bottom, basically. All right, so now we've got our zipper completely unzipped, and again, I just kind of stuffed it into the seam. Um, I had so basted my tape um, too far past where I wanted to end, so I was having a hard time getting up under there to grab the, um, the um, pole. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is you can switch to a zipper foot or, better yet, an invisible zipper foot, which is my favorite an invisible zipper foot. I mean, of course, I have an industrial machine, but all invisible zipper feet have these like um, tracks that push the teeth out of the way. So you can literally just ride, put the teeth in there and just ride along there and it puts it in perfectly almost every time. So if you don't have an invisible zipper foot for your machine, I would highly recommend one. Um, they're pretty handy. So let me put mine on real quick. So again, and I apologize that I, I wanted it to be up close so you could see what I was doing here at the machine, but I can't change camera angles easily. So ideally I'd have someone filming for me, which would make it just so easy. So on the right side of the skirt, um, you've got your, you know, your zipper just kind of basted in here. So we are going to flip that seam allowance back open. So this is how the zipper goes in and how you basted it, but we're going to open up that seam allowance and sew from the back side. Okay, so we'll take this side first, and again, you're just working on the seam allowance, and you're gonna push those teeth out of the way, and you're gonna put it into, um, into the, the groove, the far right-hand groove for this side, and just kinda open up that seam allowance, and now we're just gonna sew that in place. look how nice and close that is. So when that is completely zipped up, um, which I'm not gonna do right now because we're gonna have to you know, play around with the, um, um, oh, the zipper pull. Sorry, my brain's not working. 
But yeah, that looks good to me. I think everything should lie flat. Okay, so now we're gonna go onto the other side and do the same thing. So now I'm pushing my teeth out of the way and I've opened up my seam allowance to the right. So now I'm gonna use the um, left-hand sided groove. careful and make sure you don't sew over any of these zipper teeth. These invisible zippers are very finicky. I'm also getting tons of metallic thread, which is also not fun. So then, when it zips up, and everything's zipped up fine, we've got a lot of extra here at the top, that's fine, we're not gonna mess with that at the moment. Um, you've got a beautiful invisible zipper. Now see, if you pull it apart real far, you can see that zipper, but it unzips and zips fine. And look, this is the base of the zipper right here. I don't have that pucker at all. Like there's not even a little bit of one. So I'm kind of in love with this method. I mean, I've learned not to baste that zipper tape down too far past where you want to end. Um, that's pretty nice. Okay. <laughs> I'm impressed with that method. I think I will use that one. Um, but yeah, okay, so now our invisible zipper is in. So um, I am going to take you over to the sewing machine or the ironing board and I'm going to show you how to catch stitch your hems and your slit, and then we will do our lining. All right, so first things first. This is the right-hand side of the skirt. We've got a real long dangly zipper. That's fine, we can cut that off in a little bit. We're not gonna worry about that right now. I have unbasted my slit, and now we have a real nice press from where we pressed that open um, earlier. I've also gone ahead and pressed my hem, which should be marked with your basting thread. So you can go ahead and press that um, and you could also um, remove your basting there at the bottom hem as well uh, and go ahead and just put pins to keep your hem in place if you'd like now. Um, we've got a couple of, so I also with the hem, I'm getting ahead of myself. So we pressed the vent first because that got pressed with the side seams. Then we press the hem up, so we have a nice finished edge. Um, you could miter that if you wanted to. We're just gonna slip stitch that shut because we're gonna be sewing um, with a hand needle anyway. So there's not really any reason to, um, to do the miter, but it's up to you. If you wanted to do a miter, you could. So basically what we're gonna do is we have pressed the hem up and we've pressed this open. You want to go ahead and um, just pin because that, you know, is helpful. Remove your basting stitches and also remove the basting stitch that goes down the center of your skirt, that grain line. So now the only basting stitches that should be in are at the top of the skirt. Those still need to be there. But you can remove all of the rest of the remaining basting stitches. And you're going to want to do that really before you get too far along on this. But now we are going to catch stitch, which is basically sewing down um, either side of the seam allowance for the vent and then our entire hem. So this is gonna be your homework for tonight and I'm gonna show you how to do the stitch. And actually it's very therapeutic. <laughs> I really enjoy the catch stitch. So you can just use regular polyester thread. You don't wanna use your silk thread because that again um, can get too abrasive over time. So just use regular poly. I use Guterman Mara 100, that's what I use for pretty much everything. And we're just going to do, um, I need scissors, oh my gosh, I threw, my back is out right now, so I'm moving very slowly. So I um, chose a color that's hard to see with my sweater. All right, so you're wanting just um, an arm to your elbow length of thread so it doesn't get tangled. You can use beeswax if you want. Um, that's the correct couture way. I'm not going to bother with that, but I'm just going to show you, hopefully, 
how to do this stitch. Oh boy, look at us. All right, so I'm going to start just a little bit. There's my slit. Let me move in frame. There's the top of my slit right here, okay? So I'm going to start just a little bit above that, and we're going to start on this side. All a catch stitch is, is you move right to left, not left to right like you do with so many other stitches. Okay, hopefully you can see this okay. So right to left, I'm just going through the underlining, which is why underlining is so lovely. I knotted my thread, technically with couture, you're not supposed to, but oh well. So you go right to left, a straight stitch. Then we're gonna come down into the fabric and do the same stitch, right to left. Then we move about, I don't know, quarter three-eighths of an inch to the right, and we do another right to left stitch. I'm assuming if you're left-handed, you could do this the other way. Um, my son's a lefty, I should pay more attention to that. Um, you probably catch some fluff. And then again, right to left into the fabric. Right to left into the underlining only. And right to left into the fabric. So this is a good thing to do at like a table, sitting down. Um, if you have a TV tray, doing it in front of the TV is very therapeutic. I'm getting fluff. What is happening here? Fraying fabric be such an annoyance. All right. All right, so basically you are creating, can you see those little X's? So you will go um, all the way down and catch stitch, I'm gonna pan out a little bit more so you can see what I'm talking about now. You're going to um, catch stitch all the way, both sides, um, all the way down. I would unpin your hem allowance and go just a little bit into the hem allowance. You don't really have to go all the way to the bottom of the skirt because um, that's gonna get tacked down with the hem allowance. And then you're going to do the same stitch on the other side of the slit and then also around your entire hem. Okay, so that's gonna keep everything nice and in place. Again, if you wanna do the stitch and do all of the seam allowance on either side, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, that's technical couture. Actually, technically couture, we would not be using an invisible zipper and we would have put it in by hand, but you know. <laughs> Again, that's why I put this in quotation marks. This is a quote unquote couture skirt. So that's what your homework is for tonight. But before we go any further, I'm gonna take you back over to the main, um, tripod and we're going to sew up our lining real quick and then I'm going to show you what you need to do to your lining to attach it to your skirt. All right now we're basically just going to construct our lining in the same way. Again I used, um, there's nothing hand basted on the lining. I've just got everything. Can you see my lines? Oh yeah you can. There they are. I accidentally <laughs> misdrew the dart. Disregard that. <laughs> But yes, I can see these lines super well. So I'm going to sew the darts on the back of my skirt and then sew the side seams. I'm not going to baste though, um, well, we'll talk about that in a second. I'm gonna sew the darts and then I'm gonna sew the right, actually, everything's backwards on lining. So it's actually, um, you've gotta be careful and just envision it on your body and how it will be placed because you do want the right hand side as worn open. So you wanna sew the left hand side as worn closed. So just, but it's backwards because you want the right side of your lining is actually against the, you know, your body. So it's kind of the wrong side. So make sure you think that through before you sew things together. That's so infuriating when you do it backwards and I have done it backwards many times. So yeah, I'm just going to sew my darts and then sew um, left hand side as worn closed.
Okay, I've got it all sewn. Everything looks good. Oops. Except that I sewed the very tail of my corner. Okay, so on this, you're going to want to go and press your darts, but instead of like the other skirt where we press them in, just so we don't have a lot of bulk, you can press them in or you can press them the opposite way. Press them towards the side seams and then they'll kind of sandwich when we put them together. And then you're going to want to go and press your side seam open um, on the left side when worn because we that's the one we did all the way down. I stopped my stitching line at the hem allowance because we are most likely, so I did not sew this bottom part, we're most likely going to lose this. I don't want to cut anything off yet just because you don't want anything to ever be too short. Most likely we're going to lose all of this area here as we fold it up um, into the main skirt um, for the hem because you want like a little jump pleat there but you don't want too much or else it'll hang out the bottom of the skirt. So I have stopped right there at the um, hem, basically. So I've not sewn my seam allowance. So now I'm going to go press that open. I'm going to press my darts. And then on the right-hand side, we're, not, we're basically going to do the same thing. We're just not going to baste. So I'm just going to sew from the notch that's right there. That's this line right here. From this notch to the X, which is my slit mark, um, I'm going to sew just between there and then I'm gonna um, press my seam allowances open. I'm not gonna worry about pressing open above or below, because I'm just gonna kind of finger do that as I'm attaching it to the inside of the skirt, which we are gonna do next week. So just sew between your notch and your um, slit mark on the other side, and then we're gonna press all those open, and then we will meet back here to, um, yeah, we'll meet back here for the last step before um, stopping for this week. Okay, I'm actually gonna stop here because we need to have all those um, hem allowances and seam allowance, allowances catch stitched. So basically you'll have your skirt that you need to um, hand stitch your hem and then your slit um, seam allowance. And then you should have a separate piece that is your skirt lining, which will be identical right now. Um, don't forget, take out all of your basting stitches, except for the basting stitches at the top of the main skirt, because we still need those until we have attached our lining into them. So I think that's it for today. So next week we will put the lining into the skirt, um, we'll put our Petersham facing on, and then we will hand finish all the handwork um, of attaching the lining to the skirt, uh, the hem, and at the slit and then you're gonna have your couture pencil skirt. And we have a couple other little finishing um, things that we'll do just for long lasting wear. All right, I will see you guys next week. Thanks for following along, bye.